What's going on guys? So we are out here at CCRV in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we are going to take a look at this brand new Cedar Creek Silverback Edition mid-bunk fifth wheel. This is a really cool fifth wheel. Cedar Creek has a huge following because their units are built relatively well. They do a great job with the fiberglass they use as well as some of the technology and the amenities that they put in these. These are definitely what I would consider a value-oriented luxury brand that gives you a lot of amenities of a full-time rated fifth wheel in a package that is going to cost you a little bit less than a full-time rated fifth wheel, even though these are four seasons rated. So hang tight. I think you're going to enjoy this video. Before we get too far, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. Really cool, they use these new kind of micro-sized Rhino box up front. It's essentially like a traditional fifth wheel pin box, just a little smaller. In some cases, you have to be a little bit careful though because that might not extend out far enough to give you the clearance you might be looking for. Anyways, coming back here, looking at the gross vehicle weight rating of this unit, which is 16,135 pounds, relatively heavy fifth wheel, has a 2,942 pound cargo capacity, and it runs on G-rated 16 inch tires. Pretty cool. So it also has twin 7,000 pound axles. You're going to transfer roughly 3,500 pounds to the back of your truck, so you always deduct that from your gross vehicle weight rating, and that gives you an idea of where your axle capacity needs to be. This uses kind of that flat pancake style slide system. I call it the hidden slide system because you really don't see any part of it from outside of the slide. It's really good for your smaller slides like this. If you're going to use bigger slides, I recommend rack and pinion. Coming back here, let's take a look at the frame. This runs on a 12 inch I-beam frame. Again, rack and pinion slides. This has the level up auto leveling system, which is the hydraulic version. The ground control is the electronic version. Coming over here, let's take a look at the storage. It has a really nice storage, and I love that they actually used a more finished off style backer board here. Have the nice textured rubber flooring, plus an electric cord reel. That's really cool. Nice waterworks board, very clean, very well laid out. Everything is set up very nicely. They did a great job in here. And Cedar Creek, again, is kind of indicative of having a lot of those really great features, but at an affordable price. Definitely a brand to look at. Very thick baggage doors. Again, this is the size of door you would normally see on a DRV or a Lux, but you see it on a Cedar Creek unit. Looking underneath here at the drop frame. So this rides on a eight inch I-beam drop frame. Coming around, you can see frameless windows. This has the Easy Flex suspension system by Dexter. This has Westlake G rated tires, very, very similar to Saloon tires. So, if you can get the Westlake G rated tires on your RV, you're actually getting a pretty solid tire. Coming around to the back of this unit, you will see it has a two inch receiver that is not designed to tow a vehicle, that is designed for an accessory rack. Wired for a Furion wireless backup camera, it has low profile air conditioning units, and it does have all LED lighting, plus of course a ladder to get you up to the walk-on roof. Again on this side, rack and pinion slides, your spare tires right under there. Again all frameless windows. Coming up here, you'll see the other side of your storage, which is huge because it has a drop frame. Storage is a very good size storage, and you'd be hard pressed to find something that won't fit in there Unless you're trying to put a full-size dining room set in Over here you have both of your propane tanks. These are 30 pound propane tanks You have a Place to put your dog leash as well, which is also really nice. Just thoughtful thoughtful little things That looks to be a 20 foot long awning as well. That is a very good size awning they don't have an awning on the back. I kind of wish that they would have put an awning on this slide also. Let's take a step up into this 37 MBH from Cedar Creek. Coming inside, kitchen area is really nice. So one thing to keep in mind with this design is it's a little bit different than Cedar Creek Silverbacks of past. In the past, they had a different slide top design. The slides actually came to a peak and they've recently changed to a slide that's completely flat up top. 
One of the reasons the old slide was kind of a thing for them was because they claimed that stuff kind of just slid off of it versus getting trapped on it. With something like this, you might want to put slide top awnings on simply because it keeps debris and stuff from getting trapped. But this is a really cool floor plan. You have a decent size island. You have some room over here on this side, plus all your drawers down here. Here in the kitchen area, you have about seven inches of space on each side of the cooktop, which is nice. It gives you room to put handles, so you don't have to worry about them hitting a wall like in so many RVs. Here in the living room area, you have a 50-inch TV. You have a nice fireplace below, some storage there, cabinets above, nice storage above the full-size microwave. This does have a full-size residential refrigerator, and it has a huge pantry next to it with pull-out drawers, so that's really nice. The only one that doesn't pull out is the very top one. That'd probably be for things like paper towels and larger items. The sofa is interesting because it takes up pretty much the entire width of the back except for this area right here. And I think I would have preferred probably a sofa with slightly smaller armrests to put some end tables or center the sofa and just put smaller end tables at the end. Just anywhere that you can set your phone, a drink, something like that. Overall, though, it's a really nice interior. You have your theater-style seating right here. Lots of room around the freestanding dinette. You probably could have put a larger or a wider theater seat here that has the cup holders side by side versus front and back because you have plenty of room right here. I mean, this is just a very large area. Or you could have sacrificed some of this area, maybe brought the dinette in a little bit and put a coffee station here at the end. I think they could have done something a little different with this considering this theater seat is off the wall by about four inches. So if you moved this seat over a little bit, reposition or went to a slightly narrower window here, you could have moved this a hair over this way, and then you could have put a good size coffee station right here for your Keurig or whatever you need to set there. It's just my opinion. Because there's no room here for a coffee station. I like this floor plan, but what I don't like about it is when you go to these barn style doors, you kind of give up space here because if they would have put this entrance right here, then they could have utilized this entire wall space. But some people like this. This is a really new modern design and some people are really, really into this. And if you are, this might be perfect for you. Going into the mid bunk space, you have a nice countertop area here, nice countertop, lots of wardrobe space in here, lots of place to store clothing, toys, whatever you might have or whatever you might use this for. I probably would have suggested that we take these cabinets out and turn this into a desk. That way you could have done some work in here and you could have made the top come out significantly further. That way you'd have room to put a computer, laptop, extra monitor, things like that because they give you all your connections here for a TV. Right here, you're going to have a love seat that turns into a bed as well. It does not have the flip-up bunk above it, which is, again, something I prefer. I like having the flip-up bunk, mainly because if you want to block out the light, you can always flip it up, or if you don't want it there, you can flip it up. But if you have extra people with you, you can always flip it down. I'd love your opinion, though. If you've looked at mid-bunks, do you prefer it to have the upper bunk or just the lower sofa? Let me know. Coming around this way... You have a nice, really small coat closet. You wouldn't be able to fit too much in there. On this side, you have your controls. So you have your touchscreen controls here. Plus, you have solar power connected up here as well, which is also really cool. Now, something that's really cool that Cedar Creek does with the silverback that other manufacturers don't is they create this notched area here for the steps to get up into the mid bunk. In most cases, you get a ladder. And the ladder can kind of be dangerous for some smaller kids. With this, you actually have steps. And even an adult could climb these steps and get into the mid bunk without any problem at all. Now, the height in here is actually a pretty good size. It's a little taller than many that I've seen. Above the mattress, it's 1.95, so it's almost two feet above the mattress. So it's actually a pretty good sized space. Coming back, very nice size bathroom as well. This is a great size bathroom. Good size shower, lots of room in front of the toilet. They probably could have positioned the toilet back a little further. If you see, there's a good six inches of space behind the toilet, and that would have freed up more space in front of it. And I think that just makes sense, but probably the reason they did that was they didn't want you hitting your back on this, because this is a very deep medicine cabinet storage. 
they probably could have actually made this a little bit shallower because they still give you a medicine cabinet here with more storage right there. But this essentially would be for your towels, your toiletries and things like that. And they wanted to make up for it by giving you a reasonable size, I guess, little storage area here. So the toilet had to come out a little bit. Overall though, it's pretty nice. Going into the bedroom, we can call this the master bedroom because this unit has a mid bunk. King size bed, really cool headboard design. Very nice ceiling heights in here. Whisper Quiet air conditioning units, both front and back. They're both Whisper Quiet. They give you this cool cutout right here that you can use to hang, you know, bathrobes or whatever you might need to hang there. And it's a good amount of space, which is also nice when you're getting in and out of the bed. Right here, you're only going to have about eight inches of space, but as you get back there, it widens significantly. Really nice front area here. I love the LED lighting up here. I love the wood tones. Great storage space up front in the closet. They finish it off really nice with this felt backer. You have your Wi-Fi booster right there. Very, very nice front wardrobe area. That's awesome. Plus, tons of room at the end of the bed. Nice wardrobe here as well. TV already hung. They just did a really good job up here in the front bedroom area. They also give you a thicker, larger crown molding than many of the RVs you've probably been in. Overall, guys, I do like it. There are a few things that I think could be a little different, but, you know, I feel that way about every RV I walk in. I don't think I've ever been in one and just thought it was perfect. Even the one that I helped design with Coachman, I felt there were a lot of things we probably could have done differently, and hopefully we'll be able to do some of those things differently. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you coming along with me today. If you haven't had a chance, I would appreciate it if you take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.